Uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon and welcome. I'm very pleased to be joined by Dr. Fatime Reza Zadeh, who is the Vice President of Hydrogen for Faro, Varo Energy. Uh, so could you tell us a little bit about Varo Energy? It may not be a company that people are familiar with, uh, specifically in the, in the hydrogen space, but yeah, please. Absolutely, pleased to be here. And it's very fascinating to see so many people here and to exchange ideas and network, I have to say, first of all. Uh, about uh, uh, myself, I uh, am the VP of uh, Hydrogen at uh, Varo, and essentially what I do is uh, building the hydrogen business for Varo. Uh, and about Varo, uh, what we do at Varo basically uh, is um, helping our customers uh, to meet their energy requirements reliably and securely, and also helping them to achieve their decarbonization uh, targets. Uh, at Varo, we have developed a twin engine strategy last year, and uh, basically engine one is uh, the conventional energy businesses, uh, midstream, downstream, all the way to the customers and yeah. consumers. And the uh, second engine is all about uh, sustainable energy businesses. And we have identified five strategic pillars to grow our business. And those five pillars of our uh, hydrogen and the derivatives of uh, green hydrogen, um, biofuels, uh, bioenergy and biomethane, uh, nature-based carbon removal and immobility. And uh, we really want to focus on uh, these uh, five pillars to grow and also then to make Varo Energy Transition Company going forward. We have, uh, we have dedicated three and a half billion uh, euro to invest in this uh, engine one and engine two with majority being focused on engine two to really completely transform yeah. uh, Varo businesses. And essentially what we do at Varo, I really want to emphasize that we are serving our customers to meet their energy requirements reliably and securely and also helping them to achieve their decarbonization targets. And yeah, I mean, three and a half a billion is a, is, a, is a big number. I mean, uh, the business at the moment, you, ha you have oil refineries and re refining, uh, you supply you know, major clients such as the Munich Airport. Um, and, and I guess you're here in the region uh, looking at looking at uh, investing in projects. Is that, is that, is that, your, that, is that why you're here? We see a, a great attraction to build a hydrogen business uh, in the region because of the abundance of the renewable uh, sources that exist in here and that makes it cost competitive compared to producing green hydrogen within Europe with all the constraints and also limitations that exist when it comes to renew sourcing renewable electricity. So yes, there is an interest for us to play in this area, of course, with focus that we want to produce something and then transport it ultimately to Europe to serve our customers and also to meet our own hydrogen requirements. Yeah. And obviously your, your, your base, your headquarters is, is in Switzerland. Any sort of comments around the, the Delegated Act? Uh, obviously we're, we're hearing a lot, of, a lot of noise about the complexity, and, uh, but you know, do you think it's, it's fit for purpose? Is, is, is it going to be a challenge to actually get projects across the line? Is it really going to help uh, close some projects and get, get to FID? Uh, absolutely. As you said, our headquarter is in Switzerland, but uh, we are playing uh, across uh, Northwest Europe, I have to say. So majority of our businesses that we do is within EU, and we have a refinery also in, in Germany, and we are serving customers across the EU with the transport fuel coming from out of that uh, 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 refinery. We see the Delegated Act to be a standard to follow in order to develop a legitimate green hydrogen project. Yeah. So in that sense, that, uh, that unity that brings, you know, what is the definition of green hydrogen, I think is helpful. But of course, you know, taking long time to really get to the, to the, to the final draft and also approved draft of uh, Delegated that Act is basically taking time to develop projects because if we want to develop a project we cannot reach to a financial investment decision unless all the regulations around green hydrogen is clear. At the moment, for instance, we are developing a 125 megawatt green hydrogen electrolyzer at our Bionel refinery yeah. and uh, we, are, we are in a stage this year that we want to reach to an uh, internal understanding uh, that whether it is a meaningful business for us to invest mm -hmm. and get to the financial investment decision point. But of course, it is very important that all these delegated act and associated guidelines are clear, clear by them doing that one. So we we understand the need for the you know, regulations by delegated act, but uh, of course that needs to be 
faster than we have observed today in order to really get these green hydrogen projects going. Yeah. And are there any other sort of key challenges uh, that, that, that you see in, 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 in uh, you know, project development uh, and working with partners and yeah, what are some of the others? Uh, of course, as said, we are developing one project ourselves and a lack of uh, clarity on regulations is the key element mm. but for, uh, on that sense. Uh, in addition to that one, if you really want to produce green hydrogen in, uh, in locations that they are attractive in terms of the abundance of the renewable sources like the Middle East or North Africa region, then there needs to be also a global hydrogen standard yeah. that everybody can comply with because we want to invest in the feasibility studies of the project and also building the project, starting the projects. And if that clarity doesn't exist, we may start from somewhere, then when we get to the point that we are ready to utilize the project, that molecule is not qualified as green, green. Mole molecule, for instance. So that clarity needs to be there. Also, I think you know, local partners play a key role in these areas because especially for, for companies like Waro that they don't have a presence in the Middle East or North Africa region. A reliable local partner can play a key role in de-risking the project to us because they understand the nuances of that region and how business is conducted in that region. Yeah. Whereas a European country without a footprint in the Middle East, they may not get it easily from the beginning. So that learning curve is if it is done by a reliable local partner can be faster. Yeah. And also does that also entail sort of local consumption as well as, as, as part of projects to, to minimize uh, having to transport hydrogen and, and the energy and, and any thoughts around the transport. We, we saw some analysis, I think, from Fraunhofer around some of the derivatives. Uh, it seems to be a preference at the moment, say, for methanol, depending on, on the carbon component and whether you can, you can get hold of it. Absolutely. I think uh, when, you, when we develop a project, of course, we look into synergies. Yeah. And if there are you know, synergies locally, of course, that will add to the fin financial benefits of the project. So we look into all these synergies. In terms of transporting then the final molecule to, uh, to Europe or the final destination, I have to say, of course, methanol is an option that we are looking into that. But our preference then it would be to avoid the cracking back of that you know, carrier yeah. to the hydrogen molecule. So if we can use that, you know, is be it methanol or uh, ammonia, of course, green methanol like green ammonia, as it is mm -hmm. in the final uh, you know, point, that would be advantageous because we are skipping the additional efficiency loss and cost associated with tracking back yeah. to green hydrogen. Absolutely, it makes a lot of sense. Well, thanks a lot for, for sharing your thoughts. It's been fascinating to, to hear some and learn some, some more about Varro. Obviously, it's a name that I, I think we're going we're gonna to hear more about, um, so we look forward to, to helping you uh, connect with, with, with lots of people and, and get, your, get your projects uh, you know, accelerated. So, uh, so thanks a lot for, for taking Absolutely. the time and uh, I, I hope you have a, have, a good, have a good show and a good event. Many thanks. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks Take for care. having me. Thank you. Bye-bye.